I was having lunch today with somebody who suggested that I merge my uh, ad lib talking about self-improvement with my piano playing. So we're going to try it. Um, and I think the right topic to start with is resilience. Um, I have a hand problem. Um, a number of years ago, you can see I, I can't straighten this finger, and I can't straighten this finger, and I can't straighten this finger. And that wouldn't be so bad. I mean, I've been a basketball player my whole life, and I write a lot, so it's affected my typing. But it's most profoundly affected is my piano playing. I've been a pianist my whole life, uh, actually a professional pianist in New York. And imagine how you might feel. It doesn't hurt, but imagine how you might feel if suddenly you know that there's nothing they can do about it and you're now going to functionally be a seven. You've got to retire from basketball because I can't hold the ball. Um, your typing is going to be error prone and your professional level piano playing is now going to be rendered seven fingers. Well, that is what I had to face. And um, so I want to try to describe briefly how I tried to deal with each of those three things. And maybe there are lessons learned, then I'll just play something on the piano for you with my seven fingers. So uh, basketball, I just gave it up. I was too embarrassed. I didn't want to screw up my teammates. I couldn't shoot. I'm left-handed, and this is the, you know, I just couldn't hold the ball, couldn't shoot. So, and uh, I just didn't want to never be able to shoot, or even I was having a hard time even catching the ball. So I just said, you know, I, although it was so important to me play I, basketball, I was such, I played seven days a week for probably 40 years. And I would have thought that it was really, really hard to have to give it up. But you know, once I made the decision to give it up, it was like no big deal after the fact, just because it was like inevitable. And so just psychologically, I was able to move on. So I've replaced it by taking hikes with my dog every day, vigorous hikes. Um, and I find myself not missing it at all. I don't know. So maybe the lesson is there that, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to accept inevitability and just suppress it. Don't think about it and just move on. Or in my language from the Bronx, I'd say fucking move on. <laughs> um, so typing. I, you know, I've simply had to accept, I, I don't slow down, but I just make a lot more mistakes and I just have to go over it more. And again, it's immutable. I just, I don't let myself feel any self-pity. I really don't. I just, as soon as I start to, I immediately, and I don't even think about self-pity very much, but I just say, you know, fuck it, again, using my language. Um, I just got to go over it and make sure that I've, you know, I'm not making more, you know, I've cleaned up the mistakes I've made. I want to type equally fast because that way I don't have to slow down my mind while I'm writing and I can go back over in my, you know, I tend to reread my drafts three, four, five, six times. Um, you know, somewhere along there I can find my, uh, uh, my typing mistakes and it's not a big deal then to fix them up. So that's how I deal with that. And with piano, I just, I decided that I wasn't going to consciously change it. I played by ear. I'm a terrible sight reader. So what, you know, almost everything I play and what you're going to hear tonight is by ear. Um, so I decided to just pretend that it, it, it didn't exist and play as though I had 10 fingers. And then automatically when I would reach something where I would normally say reach for a, a long stretch, an octave or longer, I would just realize I couldn't do it and I would just play something shorter in the moment. What's the lesson there? It's like about in the moment, just in time learning. I could have easily taken a bunch of lessons and figured out alternative approaches to it or, uh, you know, uh, certainly if I was a reader of music in classical, I would have to have adapted to the, the, the chords so that I could make them with everything, but I didn't do any of that. I just, in the moment, didn't think about it, just tried to play it as damn well as I could, and when the fingers got in the way, they got in the way. And even though that means you'll hear probably hear some mistakes, you will hear some mistakes, I'm sure. But I'm not letting the perfectionism get in the way of my playing the piano. I can still play. And I like to think, you'll tell me uh, in your comments, whether it was worth, uh, you know, whether I'm being, I'm underestimating the, the impact of the mistakes. But in any case, so those are the things I did. Number, you know, to summarize, I, I kind of, try to not let myself even start any wallowing or pity. I just take the next baby step forward, as corny as it sounds. 
that's kind of what it is. I accepted the immutable. I couldn't play basketball. I accepted I'm going to make more note mistakes when I'm playing, more, more keyboard mistakes when I'm typing, and just do what I have to do to move on, which, as I said, in the writing, it's just, you know, in the course of my reviewing drafts, just making special care to note errors that I've made or typing mistakes. And in piano, certainly I play as well as I can, but I don't want to play so, so stiffly, so rigorously that in, a, in, a, in, a, in fear of making a mistake, I'm now playing without any passion. So I, I live with the mistakes and, you know, in, in exchange for being able to play with the full passion. So I was thinking just for a moment about, before I started talking, what would I play that's appropriate? I think I want to play, um, I've played a lot of stuff. If you Google Marty Nemco and piano, you'll see a lot. Uh, of U2s, but I don't think I've played Autumn Leaves, which is my mother's favorite song, and I think it's beautiful in its own right. So I'm going to now move the uh, the uh, microphone and uh, and webcam over to where the keyboard is, and uh, we'll see what happens. So only take a moment. Okay, so I've now set up the microphone, and now, quite, okay, now I'm setting up the webcam, yeah, I have to move the mic, sorry, one more second, it'll be done soon, I promise. Okay, I think you probably can see the keyboard. Not that it's that critical. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of the verse, which people haven't heard before, but why not? Just give you something new, and then we get to the part of Lord of you may be familiar with.
there you go. Well, I hope that's enjoyable, maybe even a little inspiring. In any event, I do thank you for watching. As always, um, I welcome your thumbs up, your thumbs down if necessary, your comments, your sharing on social media. There's a share button there. Your subscribing to my channel. And I guess I should put myself in front of the mic to at least say goodbye. And so I will now say goodbye. I'm Marty Nemco.